Chapter 3, Ali Baba and the Forty Sleeves One Saturday when Ali Baba Berenstein was eight years, seven months, and four days old, he went to play at his friend Roger's house. Ali Baba's parents were going out that evening, and it had been arranged that he would spend the night at the Zuckers. It was a plan that suited Ali Baba just fine. He felt he was too old for babysitters. Hi, David, Roger greeted his friend at the door. Hi, Ali Baba. How many times do I have to tell you? Sorry, said Roger, grinning. Ali Baba had tried and tried to get Roger to change his name to Sinbad. Then we can both have exciting adventures. But Roger held firm. He had always been Roger, and Roger, he would remain. He liked his name. My parents are having a party tonight, Roger told Ali Baba. Who's coming? asked Ali Baba. Anybody interesting? Nah, said Roger, but there's going to be a lot of good food from my father's store. Roger's father owned a store called Cheese Heaven. Ali Baba hoped heaven didn't smell like Roger's father's store. The store also sold fancy chocolates, and Ali Baba had no complaints about them. Woody Allen once bought cheese from my father, Roger said. Now Roger went to see every wooden Woody Allen, Allen movie that came out, and he liked to brag to his friend about the gorgonzola that the actor had purchased at Cheese Heaven. Is he coming to the party? asked Ali Baba, hopefully. Nah, said Roger. He's probably giving a party himself with the cheese he bought. Since it was over a year since Woody Allen had made his purchase at Cheese Heaven, Ali Baba had his doubts about that, but he didn't say so to Roger. The two boys spent the afternoon playing FBI. Even though Mr. Vivaldi had proven himself innocent, Ali Baba felt sure there were many cr criminals still lurking about. First, the boys rode up and down the elevator of Roger's apartment building, looking for anything suspicious. Then they checked the halls. Mrs. Zucker was busy getting ready for her guests, and she didn't mind the boys playing in the hallway. There were two newspapers in front of apartment 7G. I bet those people skipped town, said Ali Baba. Maybe they just don't want to read the news, said Roger. In front of apartment 9B, there was a broken bottle of ketchup and two broken eggs. Looks like someone dropped their groceries, said Roger. Ali Baba bent over and examined the mess on the floor. It may be blood, he said. They could have broken the ketchup bottle to cover it up. What about the eggs, asked Roger. It's all supposed to throw us off the track. What track, asked Roger. The track of the murderer, said Ali Baba. But just then, the door of apartment 9B opened, and a woman stepped out holding some paper towels. Would you boys please give me a hand, she asked. I dropped my groceries, and it made a mess here. The boys found themselves wiping up the, egg, up the ketchup and eggs. Be careful not to cut yourself on the glass, the woman warned them, as, an, as if FBI agents need to be need it to be told a thing like that. Let's get out of here, said Ali Baba when they finished cleaning the floor. Maybe something suspicious is happening on the 13th floor. The building where Ali Baba lived didn't even have a 13th floor. A lot of buildings didn't because people were superstitious. The floor numbers went up to 12 and then skipped to 14. Unfortunately, there was no blood and not even any ketchup on the 13th floor of Roger's building today. In disgust, the boys returned to Roger's apartment. Maybe there was something good to watch on TV. Mrs. Zucker was putting Roger's baby sister Sugar to bed. Sugar was 13 months old and her real name was Sarah. The boys had to have supper early because of the party. You two can play in Roger's room after dinner. Mrs. Zucker told them. I'll bring you some party food later. 
Ali Baba was disappointed that he wasn't invited to the party. You could never tell who might turn up among the guests. Mr. Zucker was in the kitchen, unwrapping packages of cheese that he had brought home from his store. I always get a little nervous when the white stones are coming, Mrs. Zucker said to her husband. That Eddie is such a joker. He always seems to have something up his sleeve. There's that expression, up your sleeve. What do you mean, asked Alibaba. He wondered what kind of thing Eddie Whitestone might have up his sleeve. Oh, it's just an expression, laughed Mrs. Zucker. Finish up, boys. I want to clear away these dishes. Reluctantly, Alibaba finished his glass of milk. He wanted to know more about Eddie Whitestone. The boys were just sitting down to a game of Monopoly when Mrs. Zucker came to the door of Roger's room. Would you boys like to help out at the party, she asked. You can take the guest coats and put everything on my bed. Oh, Mom, Roger started to complain, but Alibaba nudged him and quickly said, Sure, Mrs. Zucker, we'd be glad to. Now he would get a good look at Eddie Whitestone and the other guests, too. The Zucker's guests began arriving around 8 o'clock. Ali Baba and Roger stood near the door and took their heavy winter coats from people as they entered. Ali Baba looked at everyone closely. He wondered if he'd be able to spot Eddie Whitestone in whatever he had up his sleeve. Be sure and point out this Whitestone fellow, he told Roger. I don't see why you're so interested in him, sighed Roger. More and more guests kept arriving. The Zuckers were expecting 20 people. A beautiful woman with long blonde hair arrived. She looked like a movie actress. She smelled like flowers. Alibaba was sure she must be someone very special. Maybe she really was a movie actress. Who's that? He whispered into Roger's ear. That's Lulu, Roger whispered back. Alibaba nodded his head. The name matched its owner perfectly. Lulu was wearing a fur coat that almost touched the floor. She shook her hair back off her face as she handed her coat to Alibaba. My, aren't you a handsome young man, she said, smiling at him. Alibaba was so busy looking at Lulu and smelling her perfume, perfume that he hardly noticed the man standing next to her. Roger took his coat and muffler and the two of them walked into the living room together. Well, said Roger, now you saw Eddie Whitestone. Alibaba stared hard at the man who was entering the living room. He hurt, his head had been shaved so there wasn't a single hair on it, but he had a bush, bushy mustache. There was something very suspicious about him. Alibaba was sure of that. Before long, the queen-size bed in Roger's parents' bedroom was piled high with the coats of all the guests. Mr. Zucker came into the bedroom to thank them. You fellows can go back to your game now, he said. Everyone's here. The boys returned to Roger's room and Roger began counting the Monopoly money into piles. Do you want to be the banker, Roger asked. Alibaba shook his head. He didn't want to play Monopoly at all. He wanted to watch the people at the party. He just knew that Eddie Whitestone had something up his sleeve, and he wanted to find out what it was. Can we go to the kitchen for a drink of water, he suggested to Roger. There's water in the bathroom, said Roger, still counting out the money, play money. Aren't you curious about what they're doing out there, asked Alibaba. I know what they're doing, said Roger. I've peeked out at the other parties. All they ever do at parties is talk, talk, talk. They tell jokes that aren't funny. They drink and smoke and eat. A grown-up party isn't nearly as much fun as a kid's party. There was a knock on Roger's door. He opened it and Mrs. Zucker was standing there. Did you bring us something to eat? asked Roger. Not yet, said his mother. 
but I have a favor to ask you boys. Lulu has lost one of her diamond earrings. She thinks it might have happened while she was taking off her coat. Would you please look for it? Sure, said Alibaba, jumping up. This had to be better than Monopoly. I bet Eddie Whitestone stole it, he said to himself. He wondered how could he wondered who you could excuse me. He wondered how you could steal an earring out of a woman's ear. Maybe Eddie had pretended to kiss her and secretly remove it. Lulu took off her coat at the door, Roger remembered. We should start there. In front of the door, the boys got down on their hands and knees and began to feel around, but there was nothing but carpet on the floor. It might be in the bedroom with the coats, Alibaba told Roger. I have a fun hunch we'll find the earring there. He didn't say it, but he was sure it would be in Eddie Whitestone's sleeve. Roger followed Alibaba into the bedroom. He got down on the floor and began feeling around under the bed. Alibaba lifted the top coat from the bed. He didn't know what coat Eddie Whitestone had been wearing. He would have to look through all of them. He put his hand into one coat sleeve. There was nothing in it. I'll dump the coats on the floor until I'm finished, he told Roger, who was still down there crawling around. Maybe we'll get a reward if we find it, said Roger. How much do you think a diamond earring is worth? A million dollars, Alibaba guessed as he lifted the next coat. It was a woman's fur coat. Eddie Whitestone probably wouldn't have hidden the diamond in someone else's coat, but you could never tell. The FBI would certainly leave no sleeve untouched if they were in if they were called in on this case. Alibaba reached into one and then the other sleeve of the fur coat and pulled out a silk scarf that smelled wonderfully of perfume. It was Lulu's coat. He recognized the smell. Roger got up from the floor and began helping. He shook out a navy blue coat. Look inside the sleeves, Alibaba told him. How would an earring get inside a sleeve, asked Roger. If someone put it there, it would get inside, said Alibaba. You're crazy, said Roger. Alibaba did not give up. He stuck his hands into sleeve after sleeve. He was convinced that the diamond earring was in the room with them. And he was determined to find it and to expose Eddie Whitestone as the thief. He came to a dark gray coat with a fur collar. Following the same routine he had used with the other coats, he shook it out carefully. Then he put his hands into the sleeves. There was a soft wool muffler in the right sleeve. He pulled it out to examine it. And there, just as he known it would be, was the sparkling diamond earring stuck in the wall. I found it, he shouted. Look, here it is. He climbed over the coats on the floor to show Roger. Fantastic, said Roger. Let's go show everyone. No, wait. I think you better call your parents in here first. Roger looked puzzled, but he left the room and returned with both of his parents. I wanted you to see this, said Alibaba, holding out the muffler. He had put the earring in his pocket for safekeeping. Why, that's Eddie Whitestone's muffler, said Mr. Zucker. Exactly, said Alibaba. You said Eddie Whitestone always had something up his sleeve. And that's just where I found this muffler. And look what was stuck on into it. Alibaba whipped out the diamond. Oh, David, Mrs. Zucker explained. You found it. Lulu will be thrilled. Eddie just gave her those earrings for their anniversary. <laughs> Alibaba turned deep red. It had never occurred to him that Lulu could be married to Eddie Whitestone. How clever of you to find the earring, said Mrs. Zucker, putting her arm around Alibaba. Let's stick it back on the muffler as it was. Everyone will be so surprised. 
Alibaba followed the Zuckers out of the bedroom. The guests were sitting around talking, but they all turned when the four of them walked into the living room. Look what we found, shouted Roger. Why, that's my muffler, said Eddie Whitestone, pulling on, pulling on his mustache. Oh, look, cried Lulu, my diamond earring. It must have gotten caught on Eddie's muffler when we were taking off our coats. She picked the earring out of the woolen scarf and stuck it back into her earlobe. Roger, you're wonderful, she said, giving him a big kiss on his cheek. Roger blushed. It wasn't me, he said. It was Alibaba. Before he knew what was happening, Alibaba found himself wrapped in Lulu's arms. She kissed him on both cheeks and left lipstick smudges. Then, with her arms still around Alibaba, Lulu turned to her husband. Eddie, she said. I think these boys should get a reward for their detective work. Eddie Whitestone walked over to them. He took his wallet out of his pants pocket and removed two bills. This is for the two of you, he said. He handed each boy a $5 bill. And many thanks for finding the earring. The guests all burst into applause. Mrs. Zucker handed Roger a plate on which she had piled an assortment of goodies. The boys took the food and the money and returned to Roger's room. It was almost time for bed. Alibaba was glad to have missed their game of Monopoly. Real money was better than Monopoly money any day of the week. All right. So go ahead and pick two of these questions to answer. We'll talk about these at another time. And if, excuse me. And if you can think of some more idioms to share, you can either share them on here or put them in the comments in Google Classroom. All right, boys and girls, we'll see you later.